Bitch, it's your man, Big Mitch, Mr. Digger Ditch from 106, kicking in those with 03 O's, breaking two eight Vegas Suns, I mean 101s, the Chronicles, Vegas, the Meadows. You already know what it is. Oh, and you already know, sideways swing, <laughs> on them things, you know you can hang, chitty chitty bang bang. <clears throat> Um, off top, somebody wanted me to do something on the Moulin Rouge. Um, now when it comes when 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 it comes to Moulin to the Moulin Rouge, I'm gonna have to get like uh like people that's a little bit older than me, because um, you know number one the Moulin Rouge you know uh was like from what I can understand was like the black strip of Vegas at one point, you know, because, you know, black uh, artists were not allowed to perform on the strip. People like Sammy Davis Jr. And, 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 you know, all the ones that was back during that era had to perform at the Moulin Rouge. In fact, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. Um, was the first black to perform on the strip because Frank Sinatra, you know, he uh, refused to perform because, you know, um, Sammy Davis Jr. was a part of what was known as the Rat Pack, which was Frank Sinatra and, and a few more of them dudes down there. Uh, and Frank Sinatra, uh, you know, he uh, he threatened to, you know, not perform if they didn't allow Sammy Davis Jr. to perform with them. So Sammy Davis Jr., you know, became the first to, uh, the black to perform on the strip, but at first that uh, he was strictly located down there at the Moulin Rouge with the rest of the uh, black entertainers, you know, and it was due, due to racism and segregation, but as far as how the Moulin Rouge operated and uh, what went on and what it was used for, you would have to get, like, older people to come in and speak on that, you know, because so when I was coming up, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, we perverted that. That was We were slanging. They were slanging dope out there. We was gang-banging, shootouts, and all that in front of the Moulin Rouge. So I don't want to talk about that part of it because it was a black uh, a landmark at one point before it got burnt down. But uh, we're going to need some older people to get up and uh, put it in the chat for people that don't, you know know about the Moulin Rouge, that got a history about the Moulin Rouge, that want to speak on the Moulin Rouge. Now, <clears throat> moving along. Um, I believe when I left off last time, I was talking about, you know, I was ending you know, uh, the Cali thing, you know, did it have any influence of Vegas? Did it take over? And I believe I covered enough of that. And to be quite frank, I think I made it very clear when I said, did nobody run these streets of Vegas? You know, I mean, to be honest with you, you know, the Gershon being the biggest gang and occupying territory like in, uh, you could say 40 block, you know, uh, the Brownies, the little carry arms and the big carry arms. You know, those was all stronghold of the Gershons, you know what I mean? And then you had some that was in Northtown, like Ken Folk and all them. But, you know, them Bloods, you know, since they inception, you know what I mean? Uh, the, the PBs and the Parus, when it was just them two, you know, they was always strong, you know, in the midst of UCCs, Valley View Gangsters, Gershons, West Coast Crips, uh, you know, CCGs, you know, BTDs, you know, uh, OGs, all that, you know, for them to be the only two blood gangs on the west side, you know, they had to be strong. But then later on, the Colts came and then Burgundy Swore Pyru came, you know what I mean? And so the blood's always been strong, but they was always outnumbered, but they always held strong in the territories that they held. Nobody ever came in and really tried to uh, take over, except them back streets, and, and, you know, it didn't end too well for them, you know, especially in the pen. But uh, other than that, um, <clears throat> don't nobody run these streets, man. Everybody didn't have their heyday, you know, when they were strong, the Bloods, you know, when they was wreaking havoc, the Gershons and the Donnas, when they was wreaking havoc, you know, the ABMs, when they was doing their things, the NTGs, everybody had their time when they... They hood was just out there like that, you know, the six O's, you know, and you had like, <clears throat> you know, it's different from Cali, you know, uh, out here in Vegas, you know, we don't have alliances like that, you know, you know, all like y'all have all the East Coast and the, and the 60s riding together and the 40s and the 
the 30s and all that. Then you have, like, <clears throat> you know, uh, the gangster car, the moving car, everything that's up on the gangster, you know, uh, all that. You know, we don't got none of that out here. You know, the alliances we had out here was, like, the Gersons and the Donners. The Bloods always had an alliance because they was just blood. So when one blood get down, the rest of them get down. No matter where they was at, you know, from Elko, you know, to the streets, the bloods always rolled together. Whatever blood inherited a war, it was all the other bloods war. They war together, you know what I mean? So that was just that. So, uh, but it was no real alliance. It's the rolling 50s and the rolling 60s out here formed an alliance, you know, but uh, the west side and, and, you know, the north town, you know, they went to, you know, war, the war against each other, you know, but other than that, it was never no real alliances out here like it is in California, you know what I mean? People rode for their hood out here and it was that, you know what I mean? But uh, somebody asked me an important question that I want to ask, right? And, you know, my platform, you know, it's about gangs and all that, but it's also about, you know, social topics too. You know, you got to elevate. You can't stay, you know, at one level. You have to be able to raise your vibration. And that's what we go do on this channel. Um, somebody asked me a question. They said, uh, and this happened to me before, what would you do? And I want to ask y'all a question, right? What would you do if you was in your car, right, and you was rolling, and you see one of your homeboys, right, you rolling, now, you've been out the game, you know what I'm saying? You, you actually on good terms with your, your with your girl. You, you know, y'all raising y'all kid. You ain't been going to jail. You got you a good job, you know what I'm saying? You've been out the way. You ain't banging. You can go where you want to go, you know what I'm saying? You don't got to roll around with no pistols. You ain't slanging or none of that. You out the way, you know what I'm saying? You strictly on the father thing, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's working good for you, you know, and you've been doing this for a while, right? So you roll it. And you see one of your childhood day one, you know what I mean? He walking up the street, whatever, right? And so you swoop up, you know what I'm saying? You, hey, you know what I'm saying? You turn your music down. You, hey, what up? Y'all chopping it up, woo, 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 right? And he like, yeah, man, what's happening, woo, woo? He like, hey, man, uh, swoop me up up over here, woo, you know what I'm saying? You like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing, you know what I'm saying? That's the homie. You know, so you get in the car, you know, oblivious to you. He got a gap some dope, all that. And that's why he need to get in the car because he, he he know he dirty. So he'd rather get with you and get there faster than be walking with what he got, right? So y'all rolling, right? Now, little do you know, the police probably, they've been watching this cat because he been doing too much. You don't know nothing about that because you ain't been in the streets. You ain't seen this cat no, no, how long, you know? But he ain't telling you nothing. He ain't telling you that he hot as fish grease. You don't know nothing, right? So all of a sudden, the police, when they see him getting in the car with you, they decide to blurp y'all. They pull y'all over, right? Now, mind you, you got you a job, you know, a good job. You making you $20, $27 an hour. Your girl making $24, $25. You got you a house. You know what I mean? You got you a car. Your girl got a car. You doing good. You been doing good. And you about to get a raise, right? And you just put in for a supervisor's position. You got all this going for you, right? Now listen, they blurp y'all, the police, right? So you like, you pull over. You know your L's, right? Your tags, right? Everything, right, right? So you not suspecting nothing, right? This cat right here, he ain't saying nothing. But he's slowly taking everything out of his pockets and he's stuffing it up in your car. But you ain't tripping. You you paying attention to them like, what the hell are they pulling me over for, right? So they telling y'all to get out the car like, you know, ordering y'all out the car one at a time. So you like, what the hell all this about, right? So you follow orders, you know what I'm saying? You know how it used to be, so you do what they tell you to do. You ain't tripping. You know you good. So they get y'all, they put you in handcuffs, right? They say, uh, can we search the car? You ain't tripping. You know ain't nothing up in there. Cause you ain't put nothing up in there. You ain't got no reason to put nothing up in there. You ain't got no gap. You ain't got no dope. You ain't had that. So you like, okay. Sure, go ahead. Okay. They search your car, right? They find a flag, they find a dope, and they find a pistol. Now mind, even though you did good, you doing good. 
You didn't been to the pen before. You didn't been in the game. But you just, you know, you got your life back on track. But you didn't been down that road before. You just decided not to go back. And you and you've been out for a very long time, over ten years. But you is an ex felon though, right? So they get that gun, right? And you know what comes with that being an ex felon in possession of a firearm, right? Federal time. So you got a pistol, right? And some flag. So the police put that on the cop. Now y'all in handcuffs. And you like, and you looking at your homeboy like, nigga. And he don't want to make eye contact with you. He don't want to make eye contact with you. And you really trying to make eye contact with this nigga. Like, because you know, you know, like, damn, what the? And he don't want to make eye contact with you. Everybody didn't have that didn't happen to them in, in some hood. Haven't it? In every hood. So y'all on the police car, right? The police ask you, whose is this? You know it ain't yours. You know it ain't yours. So you waiting on him to say that's mine. He ain't saying nothing. So you looking over there like, and you don't want to be oblivious. And so the police looking at you like, you driving the car, this your vehicle, right? You like, yeah. And they like, is this your dope? What do you say? What do you do? Do you say no? It's his? What do you do? Do you shut up and go to jail? Lose your job? Lose probably your girl? And everything that you work so hard for? Do you lose that? Or do you give him up? Now, that's ask, let me see how many of y'all keep it real. Let me see how many of y'all keep it real. The real ones go, though, they, they, a bunch of y'all gonna say, man, what you gonna do? Hmm? He ain't saying nothing. Now you know, now peep this. He ain't been to the pen. So he ain't looking at no federal charges. He can take the gun charge and, and it just stay state. But you didn't been to the joint before. So, and he ain't saying nothing. What you do? What would you do? I want to see how many of y'all keep it real. What would you do? <clears throat> hmm? Hmm? Because see, I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> y'all always come up with this. Y'all say this right here. Silence is golden, right? When I played the game, I believe that. I found out the hard way, hard way that it wasn't. But I'm going to tell you something. When I was growing up and I was playing this stupid-ass game, one thing that I was taught by my OGs, they taught me this here. If we in the cop and I got a pistol and we get pulled over, that's my pistol. Don't nobody go to jail for something that's mine. If it's mine, I claim it. If it's yours, you claim it. If we in the car and you know that's your pistol, we all ain't finna go to jail because you don't want to say that's your pistol. You claim that that's your pistol. You know the consequences that come with, claim, with, with, with carrying guns. When I was brought up, and, and it's females that know that. I, we done been put on a wall and, 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 and it's females that didn't tuck flavor and they didn't found it. And they was like, who's this? Oh, don't nobody want to say no. We all going, y'all going now. And the female was like, that's mine. That's mine. And there's been homies that didn't have packed pistols when the police think, hey, look what we got here. Who's is this? Oh, don't nobody want to know? Okay, well, we all going. No, homie like, that's mine. Because some homies be on parole. For real, for real. Some homies be on parole. And, and, and we, we was taught that if, 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 if the police get us and we got something on us and we know that's ours, we claim it. It's on us. It's mine. 
this new era now. When they when when when, when y'all when y'all rolling, first of all, y'all don't even tell a homie, like, I got this thing on me, I'm hot, I'm, I'm you know, y'all just get in the car and then when they blurp y'all and they, you know what I mean? I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm an ex fellow or I'm on, I'm on papers. You don't say nothing. Now my whole life ruined. How many that didn't happen to y'all? Keep it real. How many that didn't happen to y'all? Now I want to ask you a question. If that happened to you. What what would you do? You go you go you go remain quiet. You go go to jail. You go remain quiet. You go go to jail. I'm gonna tell you. You know the ones that say they real. They go remain quiet. They go go to jail, and they go deal with that cat in jail. Oh, I'm, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do it. I'm it. I'm gonna, he don't say nothing. I'm going to wait till we go to jail. And I'm going I'm to I'm kill his ass. You know what I'm saying? That's what you say. And then you know what you going to happen when you, when you kill him? Now you're on death row. I don't kill I'll be just on death row then. I ain't doing no telling. I'm going to deal with his ass up now. Then you're going to be in death row. But then I want you to think about something. All this began when you simply pulled over and picked the homie up. That's when all that happened. When you when you when you when you thought you was doing a good thing. Now you're on death row because you didn't kill your best friend. Think about it. Because you ain't gonna do no telling. So you'll go to jail and you go deal with him because he let you take that fall and messed off your life. So you go mess off your life even more and go to death row. All because you tried to do something good. Think about it. Think about it. Hmm? How many of your homeboys would do that? And how many of your homeboys have done that? That didn't. Watch them throw a whole bag of rocks on the car and know it was theirs. And know what you got to lose. Uh, sometimes your girl leave you there with your kid, with the kids. Huh? And the homie come over there. You know what I'm saying? Or he come in your house and not telling you he running from the police or something. And, and next thing you know, they over there and they threatening, they taking the kids and all that old stuff, man. Think about it. Hmm? That's why I stay solo bolo, man. That's why I stay solo bolo. So you don't put yourself in a position, but that's Harsh reality of being a homie. See? That's harsh reality. And you know how many people that had to stick to the code that just didn't pick the dude up and then found themselves with a life sentence just because they didn't pick the dude up? And then now they got a life sentence? Or didn't pick this dude up and they got pulled over and he got all kind of stuff on him. And you on probation. Now you finna go to the joint. And now you got eternal animosity towards your partner. Because he knew he had that, see? And then they gonna say you acting like the police because you hella mad that he ruined your life. They expect you to just to accept that because that's that gangsters. They expect you just to be okay with that being in prison for something they did because, you know, I ain't saying do nothing. I'm saying think about what I'm saying. You know? Think about what I'm saying. Let me tell you something. I always say this, man. Sometimes you got to cut people off, man. You rather limp into heaven and walk into hell on two feet. There's a bunch of dudes in prison. I swear to God. Just for picking their homeboy up. Or being on a three-way with somebody. And just letting them talk. 
being courteous, they think, you think you just being courteous, just standing by letting them talk, and they talking about loaves of bread and all that old stuff, and, and you, that's cold talk for something. Next thing you know, you up under a federal indictment, and you like, what the hell? And you got to cop out to seven years. Because you was being courteous on the phone and letting these two cats here talk. That's what I be saying, man. But that them the homies though, right? Them the homies. See? Them the homies. And then you got homies that you I'm, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave that right there because y'all already know every every hood done been through that and everybody every hood got a story of that. Or somebody that didn't throw a pistol by them, threw some flames, some dope by them, or did something and didn't claim it. Think about that. I want y'all to think about that. Let's start addressing these real, real, real. Let's let's start looking at the game for what it really is, man. We always look at the kill, kill, shoot them upside, but we don't look at the, the the other side of it. You know. Because there's people that's in prison right now, man, that shouldn't be because they kept it real and they didn't say nothing. And there's other people, you know what I'm saying, that didn't keep it real. Sacrifice is real. Y'all think you just happen in the music industry. No. These cats out here sacrifice their homies all the time. They sacrifice their homeboys all the time, bruh. For real. In more ways than one. Sacrifice is real. And the best way to avoid it is don't be a part of it. For real. Because I'm gonna tell you something. That's a hard. That's a to any youngster that 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 want to join this stuff. That want to be a part of this gang banging thing. Just understand that that come along with it. That shh, no matter what. So if you pull your home, but if you if you pull over for your homeboy and he get in the car and he got a whole bunch of stuff and you didn't already been to the hooch gal, you know how it's gonna go. You know them feds go pick up that case if you get caught with a pistol. Okay? You pick him up. But you a real one. You ain't got no smut on your name. You know? But at the same time, you ain't been in the game neither. So you rolling around with confidence. Everything on you right. But just that stop and you picked him up. And they pulled you over. And they got the gun and the dope on the car. What do you do? What do you do? Huh? And he ain't saying nothing. He ain't been to the joint. And he ain't saying nothing. Huh? So the police say, if you don't say nothing, both of y'all going to jail. So what you do? You gonna go to jail? You gonna deal with him in jail? Huh? Cause he's saying it ain't his. So if it if he's saying it ain't his, you know who 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 who, who is gonna go is gonna go on a person that's operating that vehicle. It's gonna go on you. So what you gonna say? You gonna say uh uh it ain't mine. Well if he said it ain't his and then you said it ain't yours, the police gonna say it's somebody's. See that's where it get good. See, because that's when you start, it ain't mine, it ain't mine. Then where you go from there? Hmm? When you get through saying it ain't mine and he said it ain't mine, what, what, what comes next? Yeah, that's what you signing up for. Who go blink first? Is y'all both going to shut up? Hmm? Don't say nothing. Huh? Think about it. You go into the feds. They're going to say, you know what? We just going to put it on you. 
because you got more to lose. He living that life, but look, he finna go back out there to it. You was doing the right thing. Now you finna go to the feds. And you finna go back to prison. The feds go pick it up after you get out of prison. They, they go come get you when the state get through with you. Or they might come get you and make you do fed time, then send you back to the state and let the state get through with you. It depends on how they feel. Think about that. Think nice and hard about that. And in every hood, that didn't happen to somebody. And in every hood, there's people in prison for nothing. Because they said, shh. And then there's people rocking around here that say, man, that's the game. See, that's, that's keeping it real. It's messed up, but that's the game. But y'all not keeping it real, though. That's why y'all still free. Not, a, not, a, not everybody, but a bunch of y'all is free because you didn't keep it real. See? So, youngster, that's what you signing up for. Think about what I just said. Think about what I just said. You can let these dudes sit here and put this fictitious Whatever y'all think is this gangsterism all you want to, man. The gangstest thing you can do is go to school. Get your education. Life is too short to be wasting it on a bunch of dudes that would turn your ass in 